Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video, where today I'd like to cover the arguments that people make as to why America would have faked the moon landings, and why none of their arguments make any logical sense. I mean, we're presumably all familiar with the official version of events, that in July 1969, Apollo 11 achieved Kennedy's goal of putting a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth. But many people think that the moon landings didn't happen, and that NASA just faked them. However, there seems to be a few different trains of thought about how and why they were faked. Some claim that the astronauts remained in low Earth orbit because humans apparently can't get to the moon due to things like the radiation belts. Uh, some claiming along the lines of the recent film Fly Me to the Moon that they were actually able to get to the moon, but that they'd fake the footage as a backup in case something went wrong. Some claiming they never really bothered trying to get there and they just faked it all on Earth. And then others claiming that they could never have a hope in hell of getting to the moon because space is fake. That one's mainly from Flat Earthers. However, given the timelines of how the missions played out, None of those make any logical sense, and there is always some form of logic behind making decisions. I mean, there is an entire course on making logical decisions on Brilliant.org, who are sponsoring this video. Brilliant is one of my favourite ways to learn. They have more than 80 different courses to choose from across a range of subjects. All of them start off with foundational classes and gradually build up as you go through, and you can jump in at whatever class you like, so there is something for all knowledge levels. And the classes themselves are, well, brilliant. Their use of interactive animations I find really makes the topics easier to understand, and regular viewers of this channel will know I'm answering questions on Brilliant every single day. My daily streak is now up to 523 consecutive days. Try it for free to see if you'd like it by grabbing a 30-day free trial using my link brilliant.org forward slash Dave McKeegan, and doing so will get you 20% off their annual subscription. The first aspect of all of this that doesn't make any logical sense is the Soviets. Most people can agree that the ultimate driving force behind the moon landings was the Americans and Soviets trying to outdo each other. The Soviets already had the accolades of putting the first satellite and human into space, and they would also go on to achieve the first spacewalk as well. So NASA knew they were really behind the Soviets and had very little chance of achieving any major firsts in Earth orbit. So instead, they turned their attention onto getting humans to the moon, as both sides would basically be starting from scratch to achieve it. That was their best chance of beating the Soviets. NASA's projects towards getting to the moon from 1960 to 1973 totaled the equivalent of about $280 billion. Public records show that is how much the US government gave NASA. So the US government spent a hell of a lot of public money towards the goal of basically getting to brag that they'd beaten the Soviets. Faking that would be an insanely risky plan from multiple aspects. From the simple point that if it ever came to light and the public found out that so much of their money had been wasted on something that NASA knew could have never been done, they would risk a public uprising. The only benefit of the whole endeavour was bragging that they'd beaten the Soviets. The Soviets, of all people, would be the ones most closely scrutinising everything that NASA did. They were sending their own unmanned craft to the moon at the same time that the Americans were landing humans there. The Soviets had the ability to track their own craft, which means they would have also known if the Apollo craft were going there or not. Now, I've seen numerous people who say humans haven't walked on the moon who are happy to accept that unmanned probes and rovers were landing on the moon at that time, and that these were how NASA were able to get such accurate photos of the landscapes in order to be able to create fake ones in a studio. Well, if the Soviets had so much as a hunch that NASA hadn't landed on the moon, they would have just sent their next lunar probes to land at the claimed Apollo 11 landing site and shown that there was nothing there. But they didn't. 
The Soviets stood to gain so much by ousting the Americans for faking the moon landings. It would have turned the US public against their own leaders, it would have galvanized the Soviet public, who America had essentially been trying to screw over, and it would have likely shifted global opinion more away from the US and towards the Soviets. Instead, they just accepted defeat. Now, I have seen a few arguments as to why they would do that. Bart Cybrell on Joe Rogan's podcast tried claiming that the Soviets knew it was fake and they were bribing NASA for their technology to keep quiet. The Russians would have found out and the Chinese would have found out and they would have blown the whistle. That's just not true. And that's what I have a source in the command center of the space station at China, China Space Agency. He says they know, everyone knows it's fake. They're blackmailing NASA for technologies. Well, the first question is what technology? NASA were behind the Soviets in every point up until they developed the tech for getting to the moon. But if they couldn't actually get to the moon, then that technology would be worthless, and ousting America for faking the landings would have been far more beneficial to the Soviets. The other argument is that the Soviets' race for the moon was bankrupting them, and they couldn't actually afford to keep going with it, so by letting people think NASA had beaten them, they would be saving face rather than admitting they were broke. Again, doesn't seem very logical. If NASA had to fake the moon landings, it would have been because it wasn't possible to get humans to the moon with the technology of that period. For example, let's go with the most common reason that I've seen, that apparently we couldn't get past the Van Allen radiation belts. Meaning, if NASA couldn't do it, the Soviets were unlikely to be able to achieve it either. So, rather than letting people think NASA had beaten them, the more logical approach, in my opinion, would be for the Soviets to expose NASA to the world for faking the landings and then explain why it wasn't achievable at that time. That way, the Soviets could still end their efforts in trying to get to the moon then, so they would stop hemorrhaging money, or it would have completely destroyed the credibility of NASA and the US, whilst also leaving the race to the moon open so that the Soviets could still potentially win it in the future. But now, let's get on to why NASA's timeline doesn't make any sense for faking the landings. And really, my question with this is, why Apollo 11? Of all of the missions to fake landing on the moon, 11 arguably makes the least sense. Let's say for a moment that we're going with the train of thought that getting to the moon was not actually possible. For whatever reason you want to pick, that just getting humans safely to the moon was not possible at that time. Two months prior to Apollo 11, Apollo 10 flew. The mission profile for this was to essentially fly the full Apollo 11 mission all the way to lunar orbit and descend most of the way to the surface, but then climb back to orbit before they landed. This was all covered in news broadcasts before the mission flew, so it was always the plan that they were going most of the way to the moon but that they hadn't installed the landing software on the lunar module's computers, and that they were only going to descend to 50,000 feet, and as such, they'd only fueled the ascent stage of the lunar module with the amount of fuel that Apollo 11 would have at that point in their ascent. Walter, there was some small debate at NASA after the successful flight around the moon of Apollo 8 as to whether the moon landing flight would be Apollo 10, this one, or Apollo 11, the next one. That was quickly resolved. It would be Apollo 11. But since that decision was made, there has been speculation as to whether or not this limb flying in Apollo 10 could land on the moon if, it if there was a real-time decision to do so. Well, Scott McCloud, can limb 4, this limb, land on the moon if they decide to do so after getting to 50,000 feet and everything going well? Well, Nelson, I guess the answer directly is no, it cannot land on the moon. Basically, the reason is, uh, in our flight plan, we have not planned it to land there, and therefore, there is not enough fuel to go down to a landing. The reason there isn't enough fuel is so that we can have the proper amount of weight on the vehicle when we go back up for a rendezvous and docking with the command module. In other words, you want to have exactly the same weight, as close to possible, the same weight that uh, the limb will have when it comes back to meet with the command module on 11. Yes, this is to 
simulate all of the conditions at lunar distance and exercise all of the systems. And we want to be as close as possible to the actual 11 flight. All of that would be completely irrelevant if they were not actually flying to the moon. Why go through all of the effort of faking the videos and the photos from the Apollo 10 mission to then refake all of them, plus the lunar surface videos, for Apollo 11? If they were faking the moon landings anyway, surely they would have just had Apollo 10 apparently land on the moon. I mean, if there was some specific reason, like they particularly wanted Neil Armstrong to be the first human on the moon, then why not just put the Apollo 11 crew on the Apollo 10 mission? The only realm in which the existence of the official Apollo 10 mission makes any sense is if they were actually going to the moon. Now, some people have argued that maybe they could go to the moon, but that they'd faked some or all of the footage due to potential technical issues. Like, for example, uh, Joe Rogan said maybe the cameras got damaged by radiation. Okay, well, right. why would the pictures be fake if they really went? But well, in any you case... Could, no, you could make the argument that the radiation damaged the cameras and they weren't able to get real photographs, and so they made a, a conscious decision to use fake photographs. Again, this whole idea doesn't really make any sense. The previous missions of Apollos 8 and 10 both had made TV broadcasts whilst in lunar orbit. NASA had landed five unmanned surveyor probes on the moon, which used TV cameras to send back thousands of images of the lunar surface so that NASA could verify potential landing sites. So it's not like they weren't aware that it was possible to make TV broadcasts from the moon. And obviously, faking such an event would need to be pre-planned. They couldn't fake the footage after in response to a technical failure because the TV broadcasts were going out live. So they would have had to have recorded everything beforehand. Now, the full broadcast went on uninterrupted for over two hours. And we can even see them taking photos during this time, which correspond to the official photos. Now, if their lunar surface stills camera had failed, I doubt they would have ever felt the need to switch to some fake plan because they'd still have the live TV broadcasts and the 16mm motion picture camera, as well as their second stills camera, which was used only inside the spacecrafts but wasn't designed for use on the lunar surface. You can easily denote them because the lunar surface camera has crosshairs in the photos because of the resu plate, which the other camera doesn't. So the only scenario I could imagine in this hypothetical argument where NASA would even consider switching to some fake backup footage would be if the TV camera wasn't working. But the TV camera was stored in the descent stage of the lunar module. There was a release handle in the ascent stage which opened the compartment door that had the camera attached on the inside of it. When it was opened, the camera would switch on and show us Armstrong coming down a ladder. The only way astronauts could reach that camera was by climbing down the ladder onto the lunar surface and around to the storage compartment, meaning they would have already had to have stepped foot on the moon before they could know if the camera was actually broken. But the radio transmissions were all going out live, meaning the decision would have had to have been made before they'd ever stepped foot out the door. It also means if they'd actually landed on the moon, but then switched to using fake footage, the stills photos match the TV transmissions, meaning those would have all had to have been faked beforehand as well, but they would have still actually landed on the moon. So then the photos that have been taken since from lunar orbit that show the Apollo 11 landing sites and all the tracks left behind must also be real because the hardware was actually left there. But those tracks match the photos and videos that were supposedly shot weeks beforehand. Unless by technical issue they mean a problem in the mission well beforehand that prevented them from even attempting to land on the moon, so they then switched to an entire fake backup. But this also doesn't really add up. NASA's targets was to land on the moon before the Soviets, and ideally to meet Kennedy's goal of doing it before the end of the decade. Although by this point, this was well after Kennedy's assassination, and Kennedy was a Democrat, but at this point, the US had a Republican president, Richard Nixon. So I don't know if the end of the decade goal was going to be that much of a deal breaker, but either way, the only reason I can see why NASA would choose to switch to a fake backup rather than just say, 
there was a problem with the mission, we'll try again next time, is if there was a risk of them missing one of their goals. Either the Soviets were about to beat them, which wasn't the case, the Soviets at that point hadn't even managed to get humans as far as the moon, and they didn't have a lunar lander. They didn't fly one of them until 1970, and even then, they never flew a crewed flight of it. So if Apollo 11 had gone wrong in July 1969, there was no risk of the Soviets beating them before they could launch another mission. And the next mission was Apollo 12, which was already planned to launch only a few months later, before the end of 1969. So if Apollo 11 had a problem, NASA still had another mission that was going to be launching before Kennedy's end of the decade goal. So there would be no need to fake Apollo 11. If they were going to fake a mission as a backup, as an all, if all else fails, then surely Apollo 12 would make more sense because that was their last attempt before the end of the decade. Ultimately, there is always some logic behind any decision. The decision to undertake the space race in the first place was based on the logic of showing supremacy over other countries. If we consider them faking it, the logic would be that they wanted to show supremacy but couldn't actually do it, so instead they wanted to make the other countries believe they had. But choosing to fake Apollo 11 as the first moon landing has no logic to it that I can see. If they were going to fake a moon landing, either Apollo's 10 or 12 would make more logical sense. If getting to the moon was possible, and it was done as a fallback, then Apollo 12 makes more sense than Apollo 11, and that argument also then means that all the subsequent missions weren't faked and that the photos and videos from them are real. And if it was all faked because landing on the moon was never actually achievable, then Apollo 10 should have been the one faked, because otherwise that mission served absolutely no purpose other than to waste a load of time and money. So, that's going to wrap it up for this video. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and then hopefully, we'll see you in the next video.